Hello, hi everyone. This is Dr. Sana Khan and you're watching our app that is Insta Prep. So today we are going to talk about recombinant DNA. So we are not going to talk about the entire technique that will be covering up in the subsequent videos. But first we have to understand what is exactly recombinant DNA, which I will explain you in this video. Okay. So let us see what is recombinant DNA. So recombinant DNA is a hybrid DNA which is formed by the union of DNA from different sources. See, it, the word itself says, no, recombinant, right, or hybrid means here there is a combination of DNA, right? So it is formed by the union of DNA from which has come from the different source. And that is why this recombinant DNA is also called as heterogeneous or heteroduplex or chimeric DNA. Okay, so here let us take an example. So DNA from a eukaryotic cell is combined with a vector DNA synthesized artificially in laboratory. So here we are combining two DNA, one which has, uh, which is the DNA which has, we have taken from the eukaryotic cell and the other which is synthesized in the artificial laboratory. So when these two DNA get mixed up, Okay, when these two DNA get mixed up, they form a new DNA, which is called as a recombinant DNA or heterogeneous or heteroduplex or chimeric DNA. Is it clear? Okay, so let us understand into more detail. Now, so Peter Luban and Amin Dale Kaser were, were the person who proposed our DNA technology for the first time. And they were from the Department of Biochemistry, that is Stanford University, which there is no need for you to remember. And Herbert Boyer and Stanley Cohen were the first one to produce recombinant DNA. Very, very important for an MCQ. Who was the person who produced the recombinant DNA for the first time? It was Herbert Boyer and Stanley Cohen. So please write it in your notes. I hope you maintain your notes because notes are very important for your exams. So now let us see how the recombinant DNA gets formed. So this is a vector plasmid. Okay. When it combines with a gene. Okay. Gene, you, have, you can take any gene. The gene of interest. You also call it as gene of interest. So here I have taken a gene for antibiotic resistance from Salmonella typharium. And now when I mix the two DNA, it forms a new DNA that is called as recombinant DNA. And this recombinant DNA, I can introduce into the E. coli vector because I want multiple copies of this DNA. Okay, how do we produce the multiple copies? That also we are going to see in the subsequent lectures. So for now, remember that recombinant DNA is a DNA which is formed by the union of two DNA from two different sources. So recombinant DNA or our DNA technology is technique of manipulating the genome of a cell or organism so as to change the phenotype desirably. Why desirably? Because we are, we are using the genome interest which we want, we can introduce over here. We can create that gene and that is why we say that it's a phenotype which is created desirably. So let us see the technique in detail now. So this is a human cell. It's an example. The human cell, can you see the DNA has been removed from the cell? So once the DNA gets removed from the cell, it is cut with the restriction enzyme because obviously you need a part of the DNA. You just need a gene of the DNA. So you have to cut that DNA with the help of restriction enzyme. So here it is cut with the restriction enzyme and the desired gene is obtained. And this desired gene now has to be fused with another DNA, right? So from the bacteria, we are going to remove plasmid. Why we are going to remove plasmid? Uh, because plasmid act as a vector. Okay, plasmid act as a vector. Vector means what? Vector means an agent which is going to help us, our DNA to get expressed into another bacterium that is E. coli, right? See, for example, when you want to go to somewhere like a mall or a movie or anything, how do you go? You go by taxi, you go by bus, you go by Ola. So your yeah, these taxis, your Ola and bus, they are what they are. Uh, you are using them as a vector. Same way, when I want to, uh, sub, uh, when I want to express, sorry, when I want to express my desired gene, I need a vector. Okay, what do I need? I need a vector. And what, which vector I'm going to use? I'm going to use plasmid from the bacterium. You know about the plasmid now? You must have studied that plasmid is an extra chromosomal DNA which is found in the bacterium. So I am going to use that plasmid. Again, I need to cut that plasmid because I have to insert my DNA. 
right? So I'll cut that plasmid with a, again with the same restriction enzyme. And now with the help of another enzyme, which acts like a glue, right? Because you need something to stick the two DNA. So now I'm going to use another enzyme that's DNA ligase. And this DNA ligase is going to fuse your desired gene with your vector plasmid. And now finally, your recombinant DNA is formed. And once this recombinant DNA is formed, you can introduce into the it into the bacterium. Okay, you can introduce it to the host cell. And that host cell uh, is usually E. coli. There are other host cells as well. And why do we introduce it into the host cell? Because we need multiple copies to carry out our experiment. Okay, so in short, what is recombinant DNA? Recombinant DNA is a DNA where there is a fusion of two sources DNA. Is it clear? Are you clear with what is recombinant DNA and how it is done? Okay. So discoveries that led to evolution of recombinant DNA technology were denaturation and renaturation of DNA, artificial synthesis of gene in vitro and various tools in our DNA technology, which we are going to study about all of them in subsequent lectures, okay? So what is denaturation and uh, renaturation of DNA? Let us see. See, what is this? This is the two strands of DNA, right? See, can you see it in the image? What has happened over here? Once again, I'll show you. Two strands have got separated. So when two strands get separated by breaking of hydrogen bonds, that's called as denaturation. So what is denaturation? When two strands, these are the two strands, they get separated by each other because the weak hydrogen bond between them breaks and the double strand turns into single strand. And that's called as denaturation. Another one is renaturation means again, the two strands which got separated, but now because of cooling effect, the, the hydrogen bonds will come together and they will form again the double stranded DNA. See, these hydrogen bonds are very sticky in nature. So once they cool, get cooled down, no, they immediately get uh, bonded and the two strands come together and form a double stranded DNA. Okay. So Harb Gobind Kurana, he was the one who talked about the uh, genes and he was the first one who synthesized gene in vitro at Meshwitz Institute of Technology. Okay. So that's all about the recombinant DNA technology and its discoveries. You should actually know about recombinant DNA that it is nothing but the fusion of two sources of DNA. One is your gene of interest and the other one is the plasmid vector. Okay, vector is an agent which will help you to put it into the competent host. That's it about this video. I'll meet you soon with the next video uh, where, we, where I'll be talking about the other techniques of this chapter, other important parts of this chapter. Till then, bye, take care, study hard, and I'll meet you soon. Bye.